Hello everyone, welcome to my PyCon US 2021 talk, which is about narrative focused video games development with RenPy. And uh, I'll introduce myself real quick. My name is Susan Shu Chang, and in my quote unquote day job, I actually work as a principal data scientist at Clearco, which is a fintech company that provides fast and flexible funding for um, startup, primarily e-commerce founders, and helps them grow and succeed. And I also write weekly on data science and game development, uh, kind of like these to-do posts and stuff on my blog, susanshu.com. And I make open source contributions, primarily in Python related stuff, and it's been pretty fun. And as a little bit of a fun fact, in 2019, I spoke at PyCon Canada in person. In 2020, I spoke at PyCon India remotely. And now I'm coming to your screen from uh, here uh, to PyCon US in 2021. So I think it's pretty cool. A little bit about myself on the game dev side, which is kind of why I'm giving this talk in the first place, is I'm the founder and the only developer in Quill Game Studios. And apart from being the developer, I wear all the hats, PM, writer, marketing, <laughs> biz dev, etc, etc. Um, I started my ideation for my first commercial game, that means I'm going to sell it, in 2017. So that was quite a few years ago. Um, so it started with these scattered Google Docs, and the old ones I could find were from uh, late 2017, but I know I had some local like Word Docs or something, um, probably from earlier. And then I moved the story, which actually um, ended up being 70,000 words in English um, in Scrivener, which is like a kind of script writing software that you can f see on the screenshot on the right side of you. Um, so now I have the story. How do I get this idea from a story which has like the logic of the story um, of the game and stuff like that to the actual game? How do I do that? Um, it took me two years and I'm going to share here how Python helped me and how this open source engine RenPy has helped me. And I'm really excited to, uh, you know, tell you about it. So what's this game? It's a it's called a Summer with a Shiba Inu, and it's a visual novel made in RenPy, and it's shipped on all kind of main OSs like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, as well as all consoles at the time, which were Switch, um, Xbox One, and PS4. And actually, on the console launch, it's in the first six months, it's actually sold. Um, 10,000 or so copies and that was really more than I ever expected and it's all thanks to just like playing around with RenPy and spending a massive amount of time writing games so uh, I want to share how you can do that with you. Um, first of all though I'm going to give an overview of the gaming industry because there's very different ways that one um, as a programmer or as anything else can enter the gaming industry. Um, you don't have to do it like I did. I'll describe some of the kind of traditional ways and non-traditional ways. Um, so there are, of course, like different platforms depending on what you're interested in. You want to do like computers or consoles. Um, so there could be like Steam or itch.io, which is a uh, kind of small uh, uh, online platform for computer games that is for smaller studios. Those are options as well. Um, I shipped my game on all of these, um, but just for your consideration, console uh, game development is quite different from um, just like the other PC platforms. And okay. There are different types of studio sizes as well. So I'm going to talk about the traditional kind of gaming route, which is AAA studios. That just means studios with very massive uh, kind of headcount, budget, and everything. So you think Ubisoft or Blizzard Activision, uh, they could be making games like FIFA 
Uncharted, The Last of Us, Assassin's Creed, you name it, a lot of the games that you have heard of, most likely. And these studios make the most well-known games with the highest budget, and they could be pushing the boundaries of technology because they're partnered with NVIDIA or AMD. And their games are purchased and played by millions of people. But the thing is, like, to make a single one of these games, there's, like, tens of thousands of developers, artists, everything else on the project. And each person will take care of mostly one small thing, unless you're, like, the head producer or, like, someone, like, more high up. Um, so, for example, the, you might be coding um, just, like, the code for one specific type of gun or, like, one specific rope mechanic, which was the case in The Last of Us 2, um, you could be making one small part of a quest design, like pick up three feathers to proceed. And that's like the only thing you'll be touching in the whole game. That's possible in a AAA studio. And the success of these games are more like movies where they spend millions and they expect to make millions, and but they could still be at a loss. Um, the successful ones make extreme amount of dollars, but since that's distributed over the company and so many people, um, it's very like, you know, people kind of expect to make the money like their full time, just like their full time salary. They don't necessarily get a windfall. I I'm talking as if you're just a normal IC, like an individual contributor um, in a AAA studio. And just to kind of illustrate the kind of budgets that are being spent on AAA, um, you can see like one of the Call of Duty games uh, had uh, 250 million USD spent in terms of development costs and marketing, and uh, GTA 5 had around the same ballpark. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 had uh, like over three 300, in which probably a lot was in marketing as well. But yeah, those are some things that are common in the gaming industry, but for me, right, as a developer, as a small developer, as a new developer, I'm like, I want to make games, but I don't have millions, right? What can I do? Um, thankfully, there is another way to make games and be successful. Um, and if you want to do it for fun, that's fine. But if you want to think about like financial returns and stuff, um, indie studios have grown in popularity over the last uh, decade or so. They're just smaller studios, lower budget, um, much smaller, like they could actually on the extreme be one person. So for example, in the case of Stardew Valley, which has like millions in sales, it started out as one person after it sold like millions of copies. I, I know they've been bringing on people to like port the game and stuff, but imagine that like one person could get like it's kind of like startup i guess in a in a sense like got millions of dollars and terraria has a small team uh, most recently baba is you which i believe was made by one person as well um or like had some collaborators but these are all games that have millions of either users or sold millions of copies and they could be made by a small group and that is totally possible in gaming not easy but possible so this is the route that myself um because i'm like i don't have millions this is the route that i took and there are some other indies that are kind of in the gray area where um like for example, the developers of PUBG, they started out, they definitely had a smaller team starting out than most AAA. Um, and people called them an indie studio like in their kind of beginning. I don't know if people are still calling them indie given that they have had massive success, um, but they do have a larger budget and can make uh, kind of games at more scale. So <laughs> indie can be kind of an ambiguous term depending on what you're looking at, like team size or budget or reach. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that this is also a potential way um, one could make games. And uh, there's many roles in game development, uh, so I did want to point this out because as a small developer, you need to do more of these roles. And if you're working in a AAA studio, you don't need to, you can do your own thing. That's kind of why I want to mention it. Um, it takes a team to build a game. Um, or if you're a team of one, you have to do all these roles. 
So of course there's narrative design and writing, which is actually kind of overlooked when people are considering programming um, as the main route into gaming. I mean, maybe in my bubble, yes. Um, but I find that narrative design is such a core part of creating a game. Like when you're a Pokemon and you're like, you know, battling against the gym trainers or you have like, you're meeting an NPC and they're talking to you. Like someone wrote that. That is narrative design and writing. Um, of course, you have the game programmers and the engines or physics developer. Um, this is more likely a dedicated role in AAA. You would have producer and project coordinator. So the producer is kind of like the director in a movie, or I guess like in tech, like they would, we would call these two roles. Um, it'd be like product or some sort of like VP of product or project manager. I don't, I don't know why they needed to kind of break out project coordinator. It could be an artifact of any other field, like movies. I'm not familiar, but they're they're kind of like. They have these two roles for those type of um, functionalities, which are of course important if you're in tech and uh, you can kind of extrapolate that to why it's important in gaming as well, because they ensure that the train is running, that people are doing what they're doing. Um, and now we have like art stuff, which is actually super important. Um, as someone coming from programming, I also uh, underestimated this a little bit because when you think about it, programmers made the game. So let's say for games like Super Mario, Kirby, Pokemon, it's like I remember the gameplay, but I remember the art style of the game. When people talk about the games, like Pokemon, they're they're thinking about like there's like a huge visual element to it, right? So I think these roles are extremely important as well. So I wanted to give that overview just so that the next portion and like the things that I have made with RenPy and the game that I shipped kind of makes more sense in the context of the broader kind of gaming. So RenPy, I, I used RenPy as an indie developer. So basically as a one woman team and with some contractors. Um, so that's why I needed to introduce those things first. Um, so next I'll be talking about narrative games or visual novels. So it's kind of like a genre or a medium of game that uh, focuses more on, let's say, dialogue-driven uh, and character-driven storytelling. So it can be done in many ways. I want to bring up a more commonly known example, which is the Netflix um, series Black Mirror. They had a movie where uh, at different points in the movie you could make choices. So you could select, like, do I accept this offer or not? Do I do something else, like do something rash, or do I like run away or something like that? And depending on what you do, it kind of like branches out and like there's different types of scenarios that play in the movie after and it affects your outcome of the movie. And this is definitely one type of narrative driven um, experience. And you can see how like this interaction um, is not only being done in movies, of course, because like it's actually not commonly done in movies, but it's just very common in games. So I wanted to bring up that example. Um, there was also this like older series that was pretty successful and well known. Um, it's called the Nonary Games, and uh, one of the games in it is called Nine Nine Nine. So basically, it's a murder kind of murder mystery escape room type of uh, game where you have to learn about all the other characters. There's like ten of them or something. Actually, I forget like nine. Oh yeah, the nine or something. Um, uh, and then you talk to them and you find out their motives and stuff like that. And there's also puzzles in the game um, as well. But you can see that a lot of the dialogue is kind of delivered with this like text box type of situation um, at the bottom. And this is very common for a lot of very successful games recently as well. Um, so for example, Persona 5 uh, is a pretty uh, really well selling game as of late. Um, actually when I made the slides maybe, but um, it's not like extremely new, but it's recent. Um, you can see that they have like the 3D elements and like some other like battle elements that happen in 3D in the background, but like the main kind of character driven narrative um, is like this visual novel style, like 2D in the front with this dialogue box. 
Um, and that's how the meat of the story is getting delivered. So it's called like visual novel style. Um, another series called Danganronpa, and they've been they've sold very well both in Japan and um, overseas. And they also have this kind of like psychological horror uh, type of situation, and uh, it's like in a dialogue box where you get to talk to the other characters and get to find out all their secrets and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that's a very, very popular way of narrative delivery. And when you think about like Pokemon games too, like they have a dialogue box at the bottom. So that's kind of like a main way of delivering um, narrative in a game. So uh, with that genre of games kind of like more solidified hopefully in your your mind and that you know it's very clear that you're not making a first person shooter like open world rpg or something like that but rather it's like more this like 2d like narrative style game um this is the type of game that i wanted to make as an indie developer of course some of the games i mentioned before that were really successful they um had more developers so they had custom engines when i was doing my research on like how did they make these games um as a larger studio yeah plenty of custom engines made um and plenty of successful games made with them but as an indie developer <laughs> custom engines are costly i don't have really so much time to be doing these things um, when I have to figure out all the other stuff, like writing my 70,000 word story script. Um, so right now, I'm going to be uh, talking about Renpy, which is what enabled me. Oh, sorry, I'm just plugging in my computer. Um, yeah, Renpy, open sourced, Python-based game engine, which you can use to make games like the ones that I mentioned earlier in that section. Um, and that I made, which is what A Summer with the Shiba Inu is. It's a narrative-driven visual novel game. And because um, I already had Python knowledge, um, I started making games before I entered my full-time job in um, machine learning. But just like the fact that I could translate <laughs> the tools that I was using between these two was really beneficial for me. Um, of course, Python has great documentation, as hopefully all of you have had the pleasure of knowing, um, and it's object-oriented oriented programming, which is very commonly used in game dev anyway, so that was really useful and like transferable in terms of designing the games in, in like coding. Um, so yeah, it can be high production quality as well. Um, the games made in Renpy can range from those made in Nano Reno, which is like this yearly like half hackathon kind of sprint thing where people make a game in a very short period of time with Renpy. Um, or well, it doesn't have to be Renpy, but just like very commonly it is. Um, or high budget games, which is um, like a lot of the games that I will mention uh, in the subsequent section and kind of demonstrate as well. There were a lot of games that I really enjoyed that were made in Renpy, and they were really high production quality. So I think the creator's philosophy, which is he said he wanted to make the best way to make visual novels and give it away for free, um, I think that is true. It was the case for me. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, object-oriented programming is pretty standard in game dev, like Unreal uses C++, um, Unity Engine uses C Sharp. It's not the languages that makes this paradigm transferable between like these kind of design across engines, but it's just like the way you think about things like, oh, a character class, oh, like a menu class, oh, a UI, like this piece of the UI class, right? Like that is transferable across all of those engines, not, not just because of like the languages or whatever. Um, but yeah, just in, in terms of gaming, this just is possible to do in Python if you have that way of thinking. Um, so now I want to mention some of the things I like about RenPy. I think it's pretty flexible. You can do screen customization quite easily, like the UI and stuff like that. And it actually has a Lexer in the back um, behind the scenes. So you can write like a non-program 
mer friendly syntax like you can see in the screenshot it has scene oh, screen gallery so it's like instantiating a class screen that's called gallery if i recall correctly something like that it like parses it in the back um, so you know for beginners it's also pretty easy to use um, one of the most popular games called uh, made in Rempai called Doki Doki Literature Club. It has millions of downloads. Um, it has like these visual effects that you can totally do. Um, just an example to show that it's not just static 2D images, but you can make a lot of animations as well. In this next example, um, you can see that you can make this kind of like um, kind of whirlpool animation. But this is a very simple, like with the same concept, kind of like you can make like thunder, you can make like snowing, you can make just like a ton of animations with very simple um, kind of just like lines of code because they have this. Uh, so for example, in this case, there's an image dissolve class in the engine. Um, and all you need is like a transparent, uh, kind of partially transparent image and it'll kind of create this like effect. And of course you can just like add that all up to do whatever you want. Um, not just like this one effect, but um, if you want to do other things, it's pretty flexible. So I changed it to the PyCon US logo, as you can see. Um, I actually did this live in the PyCon Canada talk and I just like opened up the engine um, during the presentation. And thankfully uh, Murphy's Law in live coding didn't happen. and nothing crashed. Um, next, you can actually make pretty complicated strategy games that are like in 2D rather than 3D. Uh, one of these games is called Long Live the Queen, which is a pretty successful uh, strategy game in the English visual novel uh, genre. And it has, it's able to handle so many variables that it blows my mind. Like people write extremely detailed guides on like the player interaction and like all the scenarios that can happen. Um, you can make that kind of game in Renpai and this game was made with that too. You can, there's like tons of different ways of player interaction and fun, like there's tons of ways you can die in the game as well, which is nice. Um, I'm going to show this other thing, which is a uh, 3D camera plugin. Whoops. Um, let's see. Okay. Here we go. Uh, you can see that you can kind of bring the camera in back and forth a little bit and do like tilting as well. So it kind of like mimics a bit of the 3D effect uh, if you want to. And you can do very complicated um, scene design in this case. And I've started to play around with this for my upcoming game as well. And uh, it's pretty flexible with the UI. You can have all types of art styles. Um, you just have to write your little uh, dialog box class and, you know, make it how you want it and off you go. Um, I'm going to show my example of a timer class, which is when the player makes a choice or interaction in the game, it'll tell you um, how long it took. And this is just really very familiar Python to you all. Import random import time, right? Like everyone who has used Python probably knows is familiar with this um, and just start writing my class. And this is how I could get the idea of, hey, I'll just have a timer and get it from my brain to Python to the game. Thanks to RemPy. And uh, it is flexible too. Like you can see the kind of, you can use decorators, you can do a lot of very common stuff in Python. And this is one thing that I made that uh, picks a random utterance from a few of them. So if you think of uh, if a game NPC keeps saying like, hello, 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 it's kind of boring, right? So I wanted to have it pick something random like, oh, interesting, hmm, like differently, depending on the scenario. So. This is also doable because I know Python. So this is just a screenshot of uh, those two combined together. Like it said, whoa, uh, it picked like randomly from the utterances. And uh, that is the function, well, the, the feature that I made and that was possible with RenPy. 
Um, so yeah, you could actually easily remake the Netflix movie I mentioned, Bandersnatch, which is like the interactive movie in Renpai. Um, and it actually used uh, Twine, which is a popular tool in the VN community to code the script as well. So that was really interesting to me because Renpai can actually make a lot of games that are much more complicated um, than Constrained 2 with a movie, I suppose. And yeah, if you want to achieve a lot of the things in a lot of the visual novel games I mentioned, you can use Rempi and make really high production quality games. So yeah, I want to say you can try Rempi. It's pretty friendly to newcomers. You can use just Python. You can take a look at the uh, non-programmer friendly language to instantiate stuff. Uh, it's flexible for seasoned devs because you can just like dig into all the source code really. Uh, it's on GitHub, Renpy, Renpy, and thank you Renpy Tom, the creator. I think your vision did come true. Uh, this is a work in progress of a card selector screen that was also possible just because I was thinking of it, just like translate it to Python and off I go. Um, I've actually improved. Um, this scene since I captured this GIF, but you know, uh, I just wanted to show that. So feel free to check out the game Summer with the Shiba Inu. Uh, it's on all the platforms, on consoles and PC. And now feel free to go make your own story driven game in Rembai. So yeah, thank you for attending this talk. You can find me at these places, uh, Quill Studios, on Twitter, Susan Xu Chang on LinkedIn, where there's also some like data science uh, content as well, but I post about game dev also. So yeah, thanks again. It was good to see you here and uh, bye bye.